So let's say you're driving on the road on a hot sunny afternoon. There's a lot of sunlight on the road and as a result, it's reflecting back a hell lot of sunlight back to your eyes, making it challenging to see. This makes driving really dangerous. So what do you do to protect yourself to see the road ahead? You wear sunglasses. This helps you see the road ahead, making driving possible, not that challenging. Similarly in Photoshop, take a look at this video. Yes, you can see the blemishes, but to be able to see all the blemishes to do a perfect blemish removal, we need to add a filter. Now take a look at it. With the filter added, you can see all the blemishes carefully, thus making it easy for you to remove the blemishes. So how do you do that in Photoshop? Back in the magical world of Photoshop and you can download the practice files to follow along. All you have to do is to create a black and white adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose black and white. Now let's turn it off for a moment. Let us study the blemishes. The blemishes or acne is usually more reddish. So if we can find a setting where we can make the reds darker or make the reds stand out in some way, this would make it absolutely easy for us to spot the blemishes, right? So here's what we do. Let's turn on the black and white adjustment layer and just take the reds down, just like that. And right now you can see all the blemishes pretty clearly. To make it even clearer, you can take the yellows up and the reds more down. You can make these adjustments and there you go. Just a tip, don't show it to the model or the subject. Uh, and uh, be a little brave when you're trying it on your face. In this video, we will learn four ways to remove blemishes in Photoshop. You might ask why four? So that you can be the master and you can decide which method to use when. Each of these methods have their own pros and cons, and we're gonna discuss it in detail. Now, it's easy to learn how to remove blemishes. By the end of this video, you'll be a champion, but we'll also learn when not to remove blemishes, and what kind of blemishes to remove, and what kind to not remove. And towards the end, we will learn what is the best way for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, I have a little gift for you. It's not a lot, but it might help you. So remember the blemish scanning we learned before? I turned that into an action which you can download using the links in the description. So all you have to do is to load the action. How do you load the action? First of all, go to window and then actions. Make sure it is checked. If it's not, check it the actions panel will show up. Click on the double hamburger icon right there and go to load actions. Locate the action, load it right here. Once you load it, it will show up as pix blemish check. Select the action and just play it. And there you go. You have your blemish check layer created automatically. Now it might not always work perfectly with all of the images, so you might have to go back to the settings by double clicking on the thumbnail of the adjustment layer and adjust the reds and the yellows to get exactly what you want. But for the most part, this gives you a great starting point. Starting with the first technique, I already was feeling guilty for exaggerating everybody's blemishes. So I wanna do it with my face first so I feel less guilty about it. So let's go to our actions and play blemish scan. I need to be a little brave right here. Let's play it and there you go. You can see the blemishes. The first technique is using the spot healing brush tool. It is super fast and it's great for small tiny blemishes. So select the background layer. On top of that, let's create a new layer by clicking on this button right there. You wanna make sure that the blemish removal layer is underneath the blemish check layer, always. Let's select, click and hold right here. Let's select the spot healing brush tool. And you also wanna make sure that sample all layers is checked. Otherwise, this is a blank layer. There is nothing to sample from. You want it to sample from right here. So let's zoom in a little bit and just start painting. Look how fast it is. There you go. Instantaneously, everything is gone. Now, I wouldn't remove this mole right here because it's permanent. It makes me me. We're gonna discuss this later in the video, but for right now, let us remove all of these. I'm not gonna remove some birthmarks. And there you go. Now I didn't take the time to do everything, but just even doing this, here's the before, and here is the after. A lot is gone. Now you might ask Unmesh, what about the remove tool? It does the same thing, right? Yes, it does the same thing. It is a newer tool. But from what I have found out, at least in this version of Photoshop, version 25, sometimes remove tool does better. Sometimes the spot healing brush tool does better. So right here, you can also work with the remove tool, but the remove tool takes a little more time. So you have to do your own experiment to decide which one works better for you. 
the remove tool or the spot healing brush tool but only in terms of quality when removing blemishes because in terms of speed at least at the moment the spot healing brush tool is way faster than the remove tool to demonstrate that here's a super high resolution image we have selected the spot healing brush tool let's paint this area you saw how long that took don't worry about the quality right now if you choose the remove tool let's paint the same area again it it's still <laughs> processing. It's not very, very slow, but when you're removing a lot of tiny blemishes, it all just adds up. So once you're done removing blemishes, simply turn off the blemish check layer as you would take off your sunglasses after driving. You don't want to wear that in the basement. Anyway, so here's the before and here is the after. So as for the positives, the spot healing brush tool is super duper fast. No doubt about that. But as for the negatives, the quality isn't that good. Let me share with you an example. So you're literally trading speed for quality. So right here, if I were to remove this large blemish, have a look, it messed up. Let's turn off blemish check. It just doesn't look right. Other tools will do a better job. So that is why Spot Healing Brush Tool becomes a great tool for removing small, tiny blemishes. One last thing to keep in mind is that when you're working with the Spot Healing Brush Tool, you have Content Aware and Normal selected at the top in the Options bar. Moving on to the next technique where we use the Healing Brush Tool. Now the Healing Brush Tool is a more advanced version of the Spot Healing Brush Tool. Now before we work through it, first of all, let's play the Blemish Scan. Now let's create a layer on top of the background layer. You can name it blemish removal. I'm feeling a bit lazy, so I'm not going to do that. Now, let us choose the healing brush tool right here. Now you just don't paint. If you try to do that, an error will show up. It will ask you to sample an area. So in spot healing brush tool, you could just paint. It would automatically decide which areas to sample from and do everything automatically. The quality isn't that good. The texture didn't come through. If you paint a larger area, you'll notice sometimes it smudges little areas, sometimes it doesn't. And have a look, here there is no texture. There should have been some texture. So with the spot healing brush tool, the computer is doing the thinking. And believe it or not, computers also can be dumb sometimes. With the healing brush tool, you take control. You do the thinking. So to fix this blemish right here, you know that these areas would be a great place to sample from. Now, before you do anything, you want to make sure that the blend mode at the top is set to normal and all of these settings exactly the way they are. Most importantly, set the sample to current and below so it's sampling the current and below layers. So all you need to do is to hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on an area that you need to reference from or sample from. So in this case, this is the area and then just paint right here and all of the texture shows up, it's all perfect, and there you go, it's all fixed. Similarly, with this blemish, which area would be a great reference? Ask that question. For example, let's sample from right here by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample, and just paint right here. There you go, the result is amazing. Now, what is the problem with this method? You'll see, for this area, Let's sample from this area, paint right here. That looks nice for this. Let's sample from this area. Hold the Alt key or the Option key again. Click, sample, click, sample, paint, sample, paint. You see that? Every time you paint, you have to sample. It slows down the process, but it's more accurate. So again, you're trading higher quality for lesser speed. Before moving to the next method, in all of these methods up until now, you get to have a non-destructive blemish removal layer. So for example, here's the before, here's the after, right? And if you just see this layer, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the eye, make it solo, you will notice that this layer only has areas that are replacing the blemishes. That's it. So if you replaced a blemish accidentally and you want to remove it, you can just select that layer, click on the eraser tool and simply erase that. That's it. But that is not possible. Having this layer with just the replacements is not possible with the next method. Coming to my favorite method, and that is using the patch tool because it creates the highest quality results. First of all, make a copy of the background layer because you do have to do that right here by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Let's name this blemish removal. Now, before starting your blemish removal journey on a hot sunny day, don't forget to put on your sunglasses. There you go. Let's select the blemish removal layer and this time select 
the patch to. Before you do anything, you want to make sure source is selected and patch normal. Diffusion at 5. Now just zoom in. All you have to do is to select the area, select the blemish area and drag it to a place which is similar without the blemish. So I know this will be the texture right here. Just drop it and it's gone. And it's the highest quality. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Similarly, let's try this area. Remember doing this area with the spot healing brush tool and we messed up. Again, let's do it for comparison. Select the spot healing brush tool. Let's do this area. It still messed it up. If you try the remove tool right here, let's do that. It again <laughs> messed it up. If you want absolute accurate results, select the patch tool, make a selection of this area and then drag it and drop it to an area of similar texture. There you go. This is perfect. But it creates a bright spot here. No problem. Select that area again, move it to a different place and it's perfectly gone. Now let me share with you one more trick. Now this is only possible for areas with similar textures. So right here, let's say there are a lot of blemishes. You can do multiple selections. So a selection here, hold the shift key, a selection there, a selection here, a selection there, right? Multiple selections. And then you can drag them at once. So just like this, there you go. All gone at the same time. Press Ctrl or Command D. Now this one messed up. So let's do that area again. And that's just another trick. So I took the time to do the whole thing. So here's the overall before and after. Let's turn off the blemish check layer. And again, before, after. All of that is fine. But now you might ask, how do we remove blemishes from complex areas like this? There's hair right here and the blemish is behind the hair. So how do you do that? If you try the patch tool, it's not going to align. It's going to mess this area up. So for these complicated areas, I recommend dodging and burning. Now it's a way more advanced thing, which we will cover later in the video. And if you are impatient, you can watch this video on dodging and burning. But just to give you a preview, create a new layer on top, change its blend mode to soft light, take the brush tool, select the soft round brush, this one right here, and then decrease the flow to about 2%. Now just paint with white and black to dodge and burn. Now this area is dark, right? So just start painting that area with white. This stuff is addictive. So just with a few strokes and a little bit of time, here's the before and here is the after. Let's turn off the blemish check layer so you can see before, after. Now there are ways to fix the color as well because the color will be a little different because the blemish color is a bit different. But that is for a future lesson. But again, if you really want to know, here's a preview. Create a new layer, change the blend mode to color, take the brush, increase the flow to about 20% this time and take a sample. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample of the good color areas and just paint over that area to paint with the same skin color. Again, this is an advanced stuff for a future lesson, but it's good to know. Now let's talk about a very, very important thing. When not to remove blemishes and which blemishes to remove and which ones not to remove. The best thing to do is to have a conversation with the model or the subject. Besides that, here are the general rules. You wouldn't want to remove anything that is a birthmark or anything that is permanent. Anything that makes the person who he or she is. So in this case, here we have the legend Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean right here. Now he has a birthmark right over there. If we were to remove it with, let's say, the healing brush tool, it wouldn't be him. It wouldn't be the great Mr. Bean, right? Even the cartoon has that birthmark. So you don't want to remove something that is permanent, something that is a birthmark or something that makes the person who he or she is. Again, if the model or the subject says they want that removed or the project requires and the model says they really want that removed, you can consider it. But apart from that, it's just a general rule. Secondly, you don't want to remove blemishes that are not actually blemishes but are good, that add to the aesthetic of the portrait and something that makes the portrait more beautiful. You want them. So in this case, the portrait has beautiful freckles. But there are a couple of distractions that you can consider removing. Again, just consider. First of all, let's create the blemish scanning layer. 
Now in here, just zoom out and see what is distracting you. What is taking your attention away from the overall face? So in this case, one or two freckles. Let's make a copy of the background layer right here. This is a bit taking my attention away. That's all. It's removed. And apart from that, this one right here. This one at the top. And that is pretty much it. That's all I wanted to do. Let's turn off the blemish check layer. It's not a huge difference, but now the distractions are gone. Now, if you see something, for example, I see this one, it was taking my attention away slightly, so you can fix that as well. Again, it's not a fix. It's an artistic choice. Now, removing blemishes can be time consuming. It's a repetitive process. And if you don't have the time to do that, if you are a professional photographer or a commercial retoucher, you can also consider using plugins. But I do not recommend it for beginners. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming some of you are beginners. So I don't recommend it. I only recommend it if you make an income from your work, from your photography or commercial retouching. So to work with plugins, first of all, make a copy of the background layer and then go to filter, retouch for me. This is the plugin. You have to get the plugin for it to show up right here. And if you are interested, you can try the plugin absolutely for free by clicking the link in the description. Here is the link as well. And I also have some discount codes listed as well if you are interested and only and only you make an income from your work. So these are the series of plugins. So let's try Heal. This is the one for removing blemishes. It automatically detects all the blemishes and it's gone. You can control the sensitivity as to how many blemishes you want to remove at the top. You can also choose to make mask right here and hit apply. And there you go. All the blemishes gone. So here's the before. Here is the after. It does a marvelous job. Here's the before and here is the after. Now it did miss out this little area, but it gives you a very good starting point to work with. Let us choose the healing brush tool. Let's sample from right here and fix this area. It's not big of a deal. So what is the best method? The best method, in my opinion, is the combination of all. And it depends upon what your requirements are, what do you want to do with your image and how much time you have and what kind of quality you want. So if you want to do it fast, you can use the spot healing brush tool. But keep in mind, it has a mind of its own and some areas it can smudge. So if you want to give it a little more time and decide which areas to sample and reference from, you can use the healing brush tool. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and then paint on the blemish. Now, if you want to give even more time for the highest quality, you can use the patch tool. You can also use different fonts in different areas. For example, for tiny areas, lots of blemishes, tiny ones, you can use the spot healing brush tool. For big areas, you can use the patch tool and so on and so forth. So that's a comprehensive guide about removing blemishes in Photoshop. So let me know if you like this series and if you do, I will continue. This is just the first one and you will find the rest of the lessons when they are uploaded by clicking the link in the description. I'll also pin a comment about it as well. Please do keep in mind it is an absolutely free series. You don't have to pay anything. Just click and start watching. All I ask as a favor is that if you feel and if you know there is someone that can be helped with videos like this, just share it. Thank you. I would like to take this time to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.